Hey everyone, welcome to The Retreat with your host, myself, Daniela Morris Owens. I'm excited to be with you all today. So, for the very first episode of this amazing show, I'm speaking those things that may not be yet as though they are, um, in hopes that this will gain the attention of many. But on today's episode, I want to discuss a topic that has been talked about constantly and consistently um, on social media, on certain platforms, and that is the weight, the weight. I think that although this has been something that everyone is talking about, I mean, you got books about it, you have shows about it, you have movies about it, and constantly we're hearing this idea that we have to wait, we have to wait. And not to take away from the fact that, yes, we don't always need to be in a rush, but out of every perspective that I've heard thus far, and I haven't heard them all, but if I now being in a position to be able to discuss it myself, there are some things that I want to say that I don't, I haven't heard anyone say just yet. So bear with me as we go through this. The weight. No one in today's society likes to be told they have to wait. I mean, when we have everything at our fingertips, everything is quick, fast, and in a hurry. The in, we have the internet to, we have, eh, we have Google. When we used to have encyclopedias, we had to search, look, figure it out, cross-reference. Now you got Google and top choices and algorithms that teach us how to get to the thing that we need as quick as possible. We have dating sites. We have profiles that we can put on online about ourselves where people can figure out who we are just by reading instead of spending time. We have different things that are just instant and at our fingertips. And though that's good, and this is the way that the world is moving, there are some things that you just can't have unless you wait. And sometimes the wait and the process of waiting, it produces more and, and, and not just in us, but it brings more value to that thing that we're wanting too. So yeah, let's take for instance the world. I want the world, right? The whole world, I want it. There's nothing wrong with me having a desire for this thing, but do I understand its purpose in my life? Do I just want it because I want it? Or is there something that I want it for? What are my motives behind wanting the thing that I want? And what am I willing to do to go get it? Now, to some, we may be at, at a point where we will compromise for it, we'll cut corners for it, we'll do all those things because we just want it so bad. We want it in our possession. We want, it, we want the manifestation of a thing. We just want it and we have this desire that we feel if we attained it would satisfy our flesh. But that's it, that's, and that's kind of shallow. Some of us want children. Some of us want marriages. Some of us want the dream job. And we want it not realizing that it has so much purpose in our care that if we don't learn what that purpose is, because it's, I'm sure anything that we ask God for, he's willing to give us above and beyond what, we asking, what we're asking or what we may even think. So why do we rush God? Why do we rush our process beyond knowing what its purpose is in our lives? I know, I'll, I'll use me as an example, right? Because I like to keep it all the way 100 with everybody. And there were times where I was in a rush to get married. Like, a rush. Like, he said hi. I said, oh my God, we're getting married. Like, you know, I was that girl that just felt like life would be complete when I had a ring on my finger, when I had my last name dropped. Even when it came to children, I knew that there were certain things about having children I would not compromise for, and I was going to be married first. And so sometimes even me wanting to get married was more so so that I could have kids the way I wanted it and not because I wanted the marriage itself. And so again, um, I was willing to do just about anything to get married. I was willing to date down. I was willing to compromise. I was willing to take everything that I believed in and throw it aside. At one point, I was in a relationship with a guy who I just knew was not going the direction I was going as far as the things that I wanted to accomplish out of life. And I was willing to throw away every single one of my dreams for a ring. Yeah. So in case anyone ever thought that, you know, there are people out there who just genuinely, I feel like I'm babbling. Nope. Speaking the truth. Am I? Mm -hmm. Okay. So anyway, I said all that to say this, right? There are things that we want. We're willing to cut, steal, kill for it. And then let's say you get it. 
all right, now you got it, now what? And then all of a sudden, you look back and you think, it wasn't worth all of that. Not because the thing that we wanted itself lost any value, but our heart became hard towards the thing. And a lot of times it's because we forfeited the process to obtain it. And so now maintaining it is like seemingly impossible. I, I told you I love church. I love the Bible. I love Jesus Christ. And one of my absolute favorite stories in the Bible is, is the story of Hannah. Hannah who wanted a baby so bad, you know? And it wasn't that the Lord wasn't ever gonna give her one. She wanted a child because she wanted to be a mother. The Lord wanted her to have a child so that through her, he could change the world. And she didn't understand that. And until she understood what she was chosen to carry, she could not get pregnant. And I think a lot of times that's how I feel. It's like, okay, God, I want the husband. I want the, the, the child. I want the money. I want the dream job. I want the business. I want the ministry. I want all those things. And it's nothing wrong with wanting those things because truth be told, a lot of times our desires line up with what God wants to give us. But until we understand the purpose of the thing that we want, we will kill that thing. It won't last. And so, again, when I think about Hannah, this woman cried, she cried, she cried, she was frustrated, she was frustrated, all because she wanted a baby. And the Lord was like, you, you don't even know how to pray. You don't even know how to ask for it. You want a baby? Why do you want the baby? What are you gonna do with that child? Do you know who I want to come out of your womb? And it wasn't until she got to a point where she was like, you know what, I want God more than I want anything. So you know what, God, if you give me this child, I just give him right back to you as my sacrifice, as my thank you. Because now it's beyond that covetedness that she has for wanting a child. Now it's, Lord, you know, you've been faithful to me. Even through all of this of me trying to get this thing that I wanted, I got a husband, I got wealth, I got everything else. I'm blessed, even though this is not happening for me. I'm still blessed. Her mindset began to change. And I think for a lot of us, that's what God is doing in our weight. He's trying to change our mind about how we look at things. He's trying to change our mind about how we look at the situation. And while we're waiting, we're thinking this is a punishment and how come, how come it's not happening? And God is like, you have no idea how special I think you are. You're so special, I can't just give it to you. I need you to understand what I'm about to do through you with it. And so, you know, we have this mentality today where everything should just happen at our fingertips. And for a lot of us, we have the means to get what we want when we want it. But how do we treat the thing that we get if it was that easy to obtain? And so it looks, it, it reminds me of even my education. I remember when my dad was paying for school and when I was further in my education, um, because I wasn't paying for it, if I dropped the class, oh well. If I failed the class, oh well. But when I had to pay for it myself, when I had to go through that process, it was like, nope, can't hang out today, can't do this, nope, don't wanna go out to the movies, y'all, nope, not gonna stay on the phone all night talking to you, I got a paper due. You know why? Because the process, the pain of having to pay for this thing that I know I need, it's going to be the, the, the tool and, and the vehicle to drive me to get to the place that I want. It's, 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 it's so vital that I get this, that even though I don't wanna pay for it, and it's costing me a lot of money because I know the purpose of it, then there's some things I just can't do anymore. There's some, there's some uh, people I can't hang out with anymore. There's some things I can't buy anymore because this, the process that I'm going through to get this is going to take me beyond where I can even imagine. I hope that makes sense to everybody. I mean, you could think of it in any way. You could think of it even in, in your relationships. What are you willing to compromise to get to that thing that you want? My godfather said something to me the other day that kind of blew my mind. And he was asking me, you know, Daniel, why aren't you in a relationship? Why aren't you there? You know, you're getting older and, you know, you know those talks that your family has with you that puts the pressure on you where you be like, dang, is something wrong with me and I ain't got it, done, you know, yet? You start examining yourself and then, I don't know about anybody else, but my insecurities start to rise. And I say, you know, I don't know. I, I really don't know what it is. You know, I keep myself busy. I have things on my mind, things that I want to accomplish. And until I find somebody that I, I'm willing to share my time with, you know, I'm just not even, I'm not even there. And he said something that was key. And again, something I've never heard before, and it changed the entire 
my entire way of thinking. You know what he said? He said, you don't need to settle. Don't ever settle. But if you need to cut back your expectations, that's OK. And at first, I didn't understand that because I said, well, if I cut back my expectations, doesn't that mean that I'm settling? And then as I began to kind of work this thing out in my mind and go over these words that were told to me, and I just knew that um, it was something that I absolutely needed to hear. Settling and lowering your expectations, they seem to be the same, but they're not. Because sometimes our expectations are so high that it looks like our only option is to settle. But no, sometimes lowering your expectation means just give somebody some time. Give somebody some time. Give somebody the opportunity to show you who they are. When you have an expectation and someone doesn't meet the expectation, you drop it, right? But if you cut down your expectations, you might find the very thing that amounts up to your standard. And I never thought about it that way. It was just like, everybody's supposed to be instant because we live in this mentality and we live in this mind that says everything's supposed to be perfect. It's supposed to be together. It's supposed to be how we want it. And it's like, how do you know? How do you know? We're in such a rush to get the end product that we don't know that throughout the process of getting to know somebody, giving somebody a chance, it's not lowering your standards. It's coming down on your expectations. And again, this is, a, this is an ideology that was brought to me that I realized I can apply that to just about anything. Even now, with me working, going to school, I'm, I'm running myself through the ground. And because I have a standard, it's like I got to get these things done. But my expectation of myself, I can afford to kind of cut back a little bit. And I haven't. I haven't. But I just, this is why I love God so much. Because in the midst of our busyness, in the midst of our pressing, in the midst of our, us trying to attain and, and obtain a thing, he gives us the clues, the, the, the words that we need to Get us in the mindset of maintaining as well as obtaining. And so everything doesn't have to be in a rush. Sometimes the weight is the most beautiful piece of that thing that you want. Sometimes the, the, you can't have the weight without the thing. I can't have the marriage without the weight. I can't have the child without the weight. No one just instantly gets pregnant. There are nine months that a woman must go through so that she can incubate and cultivate this child that's growing in her. She has to wait. There's always a weight attached to a thing. And until we realize just how important and how valuable that process is, we will ruin it every time. And sometimes the reason why we don't have the thing is because we're not willing to wait. And so we get frustrated and feel like it's not going our way. And we get frustrated and feel like it's not the thing that we want or it's not what we thought it was going to be. But I believe that the weight is just as valuable as the thing. And if I could just wrap it up with one thought, take your time through it. All right, y'all, that's all my time for today. Um, I hope that I said enough. I hope that I got enough out. Um, but tell me what you think. Follow me on Instagram, Daniela Maris. You can follow me on Facebook. Shoot me a text message, DM, I am, I don't know. Anyway, see y'all next time. <laughs> Subscribe. The retreat, baby. <laughs> oh my gosh, I don't know how to end these.